up guys viper fpv here and today i actually want to share with you guys my settings on my 120 dollar um or 160 dollar depending on which one you want to go ahead and go with um budget pro and budget base build that i went ahead and did on the channel a few months back and um pretty much just wanted to show you guys my beta fight settings and exactly how to set everything up there um i didn't do an actual video on that i pretty much just referred everybody to um my pretty much beta flight setup videos, but I wanted to go a little more specific since that video has actually been pretty popular with everybody. So I wanted to go to show you guys all of my settings and everything that I have on this quadcopter. So I actually have it right here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it into beta flight and you have to make sure if this is your first time building this quad, um, make sure you have a micro USB cable and then you want to go ahead and do is plug this in. So right here, I'm on beta flight. So I connected everything up to USB. And right here, we have these drivers. This is your first time using beta flight. Um, you have to install these first before it would actually really connect. Um, so make sure you have these installed along with going over into searching Google to search beta flight. And you should be able to go into the GitHub and be able to download um, beta flight. So I'm using this on uh, configurator 10.6.0 probably is a newer run out that I haven't up bothered updating yet, but this should do for this video. Um, and what we're going to do is do is connect. And right now I have, this is the main, main quadcopter. As you notice, as I'm moving the quadcopter, nothing is moving because I have the accelerometer disabled. This is an F4 processor in here. It is plenty for everything that we have today. Um, but I like to have a little more overhead and room on my CPU cycles. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this because my face is in the way, but right down the bottom left, you'll see CPU load 15%. Um, that is perfectly okay. You pretty much want to leave that down. Um, you don't want that thing to get above about 30 to 40%. If anything above that, um, then you might need to consider disabling some features. Um, even with the accelerometer enabled, it's still not at that point. So don't even worry if you do, if you are worried about crashing or something and you want to use the auto level feature that it has, um, you can go ahead and do that as well and put that on a switch. Um, but right here we have my settings. So if you built my exact quadcopter, just how it is with the crossfire receiver and everything, I have my receiver on UART 6. And then I have my TBS smart audio um, on uh, UART 3 uh, right here on the peripherals. You wouldn't change it right here. So depending on which one you did pick, um, I think all the ones I do have is all TBS smart audio. Uh, I think maybe the budget base build might be using the IRC Tramp VTX protocol. So if it doesn't work when you're using the IRC Tramp, um, try smart audio. So um, just go ahead and smart audio first, then try to Tramp. So one on the configuration page. I have DSHOT 600 enabled. Now, this is not running any of the RPM filtering in Betaflight 4.1. Um, it is on Betaflight 4.1, but I am not using any RPM filtering because I just haven't bothered to enable that and purchase the um, DSC um, modification for the ESCs if you do. Um, but I have it on AKAK, AK, DSHOT 600. The armor is off. And then all this stuff here should be all default because I didn't mess with it. And now this is your personalization right here, the craft name. I just have my uh, tag name there, Viper FPV there. And then this is where you're gonna be picking your receiver. So you wanna go ahead and I think even for, if you're using the FreeSky receiver, you're gonna be using serial based receiver. So you're gonna make sure you click on that. And then right here, um, I have Crossfire selected, but if you're gonna be using it on FreeSky, uh, you want to go ahead and click on S bus. Now, if you're a little more advanced and you want to use the F port on the free sky, you can go ahead and click on the F port down there. Now, if you're on spectrum and you got a spectrum receiver, you will have, to, it depends on which spectrum receiver you got, because you can either use 2048, 1024, or there's also some other ones that I am actually not familiar with since I don't fly spectrum. Um, but I'm using crossfire, so I'm going to have it on crossfire. And then you want to make sure that you have telemetry enabled so you can get all the data from the flight controller to your radio and be able to get warnings and whatnot. Um, then also we have air mode enabled, anti-gravity and dynamic filters. That's all enabled. 
<clears throat> and then I also do have, since I didn't put a beeper on this, I'm just using the motors as a beeper. We have the RX set right here. So I can just sign an aux auxiliary channel and I can beep the motors. So say if I can't find it or something, I can go ahead and still hear the beeps and be able to locate it. Everything else here is all enabled. This is all default. I don't really mess with that too much. Um, if you are annoyed by certain, certain beeper configurations, you can go ahead and disable the ones you don't like. Now go ahead and going over to power and battery. This is all defaulted as well. Um, I mostly just use my OSD and I look at the voltage, but if you are having problems monitoring your voltage and also monitoring your, um, you know, your flight and trying to learn everything, you can go ahead and change this and bump this up if you want to a little bit. So then you have a little bit more battery and a little more warning uh, when it says low voltage on the top of your OSD screen. Now pit tuning, um, this is all pretty much default settings. I haven't really messed with it too much um, on the PIDs uh, anyway, besides messing with my rates. Now these are the rates I run. I run 1.05, 0 0.79, and then 0.30 on the Expo. As you can see um, on the chart here, um, I have a lot of authority in the middle, and then when I get to the end of the stick, it really wants to go. So as you see here, I get to 1,000 degrees at the end of the stick travel, and I feel like this helps me a lot when I'm trying to do, um, like, uh, what is that move? When you do a uh, flip roll and a pitch all at the same time. Um, what's that thing? I forget. But if you remember what it is, leave it down in the comments. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my rates. If you want to copy those, if you want to try them out, you can. Um, I like them a lot. I've tried a lot of people other's rates, and I'm pretty much always default back to my rates that I'm used to. I'm just used to them. Um, these might be a little too fast for, for a beginner, so you might not want to um, play with them. You might just want to run the default. Just leave it alone. Just fly it the way that it is. And then if you're feeling a little more daring, you can go ahead and try mine and see if you like that better. Um, I feel like I have a little more authority in the middle of the stick opposed to the default settings. Um, now we also have filter settings. Now, default is, I believe, over to the left a little more. I did have this turned down. Yeah, I have it at one. I don't think I actually did that at all. But yeah, I haven't really messed with the filtering at all, really, on this. I'm really waiting for Betaflight to incorporate this slider on the OSD. If they can do that, I will go ahead and make a tuning video off this all day. But the pain in the butt to go ahead and bring your laptop out of the field and try to record not only your flight out in the field, then also sync it up to your GoPro and then sync it up to your laptop. It will be a pain in the butt. Uh, so I'm not really, I didn't really mess with this, but this thing flies perfectly fine. So you'll be really happy with it if you do build this quad. Um, then we also do have the receiver tab. And as you can see here, I have my RSSI channel since I'm using Crossfire on AUX8. Now, if you don't have enough auxiliary ports, you might not be able to do it on AUX8. You might have to do it a little closer and not have many switches, but that will depend on what type of um, you know, radio you're using. Um, but I'm using um, a TBS Tango 2, and I also was using a Horus X10S along with an X-Lite. So I had all these quads, all those radios hooked up to this quad and didn't have a problem. Um, but I am using this on the channel map of TAER1234. So if you are um, having some problems with the you know, you hit the throttle, but the roll was going. Go ahead and go to the channel map. Click on this right here and check. click on Spectrum Group Nerd Jr. And that is actually this one right here. Um, it actually defaults it to Free Sky. Um, mine is always this one. This is how I've always ran it. I think this is actually, because I think I originally was doing Spectrum. Um, I had a Spectrum radio like three, four years ago. And that's just how I started to set up my quads. And I just kind of stuck with it. So um, might not need to change it. You might need to change it. Just Check it when you bind your receiver up and check in this tab right here. You'll see your, um, you'll see your, pretty much the bars moving up and down. And one good thing too is that when you're on the bottom of your stick travel, so say on your on your throttle, say your lowest throttle, your stick will go. You make sure that's at 1,000, and then make sure when it's at the top, it's at 2,000. Same thing goes for everything: pitch, roll, and yaw. And when you're not touching the sticks at all, make sure that they're centered at 1500 um and that will because if this is off by a little bit it's going to start drifting one way um you can fix that either in cli and i don't think i've done a video on that which i should probably do soon um or you can go ahead and do that in um on your radio itself uh, which i would prefer doing it in your radio for yourself because you get the most resolution out of your sticks uh doing it in your radio 
Um, modes tab, this is how I have mine. I don't have a safety arm switch. I just have one arm switch. So if I hit that switch, it arms. I know it's probably a bad thing to learn to do it that way, but I've been doing it that way for three, four or five years now. Um, and that's just how I've learned to do it. Um, and then I also have flip over, flip over after crash enabled as well. Now, if you're having problems getting this working, make sure that your ESCs, even BLES ESCs are on the newest firmware because if they're not either synced up correctly or if they're on different firmwares, this will not work. Um, and we also have the motors tab, which don't do anything in here. Make sure that your motors are spinning in these directions, as you see here. And also when you're enabling one motor at a time, that motor one goes on, motor two goes on, motor three goes on, and motor four goes on. And for the OSD, um, this is how I have my OSD set up. I have my low voltage. Uh, pretty much this is the warning. So if it has like, you know, your throttle's too high and you're trying to arm, it'll say throttle too high or whatever. Um, right there, have my RSSI there. And then I also do have my voltage, my fly time, and my tag here, and then also my uh, VTX channels right down there. Um, actually, I think I need to bring this bit, I believe, but I don't um, since I changed to the uh, HDO2s, um, kind of got out of whack. And then also we have the video transmitter settings. So um, I did make a video on VTX tables, which I'll leave a link that down below. Um, but I'm using pretty much the basic VTX table for this. Um, and I'll leave, like I said, I'm leave a link to that down below. But this is pretty much what mine is with the, I think this is the, yeah, this is the AKK um, video transmitter. So you can go ahead and mess with that as well. Um, black box, we don't have black box on this. Um, yeah, there's no data in it. I don't even think it has an SD card. It doesn't. So you don't have to worry about that, this screen at all. And then you have your CLI screen down the bottom, which you don't really have to mess with too much on this quad. Uh, yeah, you don't have to mess with that at all. Um, but yeah, so that should pretty much do it um, for um, kind of just setting up this quad and showing my settings on it. Um, if you found this video helpful, um, I think a lot of you guys will because I've had a lot of questions about certain things in beta flight on this quad when I rebuilt it. And I've noticed a lot of you guys are buying it. So um, I appreciate you supporting the channel. And I'll leave a link to this build down below as well, um, along with the build video to this. So I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.